Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we're going to continue talking about testing, and we want to write some more tests for our model that we have here using Scala test. So we had written things for checking basically the default setup, making sure that someone could uh, log in and couldn't log in. Um, and, uh, you know, would actually probably be good with wrong username and password. And the primary reason I'm going to do this is because we will, the next thing I want to test is creating a user. So we should uh, create new user with no tasks in. Well, so first we have to call the task list and memory model. And we're going to create a user. And I'm going to go with those names that I put up there and password. Uh, OK. Now, the creating a user uh, it does return a boolean, so this should be true to say that this worked. If it returned false, that would imply that Mike had already existed, which uh, should not be the case. And if we get the tasks for that new user, for Mike, they must be an empty list. OK. Let's go ahead and run that test. And see if we're happy with this. Now, all of these tests are self-contained. Um, I'm going to add another test that and we'll see whether or not it passes. Uh, the Actually, I want to do one where I want to see the create user fail. So if we do create user, and the name is Mark, with a different password, that should be false. We also want to take and create some new uh, tasks. And it would be good to create tasks for both existing users and new users. Um, so create new or add task, let's, since that's the add new task for default user in. And our method there is add task. Now this returns unit, so it's not necessarily going to give us any information about whether, whether it works. So our username here is Mark, and the task I want to add is testing. In order to make sure that that works, the list of what uh, the list of methods or of, of tasks that this user has needs to contain um, the the word testing. So if I were to call the get tasks on mark. Now here's where things uh, get interesting. There is a must contain that exists, but notice that kind of said contain word. And I better match capitalization. Otherwise, I know this won't work. It's compiling. I'm not 100% certain that contain is going to uh, call the right thing for the list. If it does, I'll be happy. If not, 
what we'll do is we'll change it so that the we call contain on the return from git task. Okay, cool. Uh, so Scala test, it's check for containment works on lists as well. Uh, I guess we should check for tasks that don't exist. Um, let's see, or we could try, let's see, add new task for new user in. So let's see if Mike can have a task added. So instead of doing this with Mark, we'll do it for Mike. I'm not going to use the same string because that would be problematic. Uh, <clears throat> mainly because the odds of something weird that was going wrong but still reports a correct thing would be higher. Uh, in that situation, we could accidentally pull up the tasks for Mark instead of Mike. Um, now, let's go look here. So, the git tasks, task.git of username, git or else nil. Okay, so one of the things this tells us is that inside of this single must block, all of these tests are being run in order with the same instance of, of the application, in this case, the test list memory model. If that wasn't the case, if it was recreating a new task list memory model for each one of these, this one wouldn't work. Um, let's see, what should what would add task do? Uh, actually, I guess it would, um, because we made it so that if they aren't there, that we still get back. Um, because we use a git or else, it'll give a, a nil. So we made it so this is, is robust in our model and it's behaving as expected. Uh, there's a little part of me that's a bit uneasy about the fact that <clears throat> I'm not certain if Mike existed as, as a user at this point, um, but we can still add something to him, uh, and he goes into the map. Okay, so we've done, we've created users, we've add tasks. The only thing that we haven't done now is remove a task. So, remove task from default user in and remove task. Now our remove task method again returns a boolean telling us whether or not we removed. So we need to actually test both options there to make sure that when the thing is there we get true and when it's not we get false. Uh, let's go ahead and take out eating so the first name, the first argument was the username. And so this is one of the things that we know should exist to start with. And here I'm going to try to see if Scala test will do something nice for me. Remove task. Oh, it takes an index, not a, uh, not a string. Um, so zero one is eat. This test makes me a little unhappy in the sense that I, the one and eat could easily be mismatched. Uh, it would probably be better to call a get. Uh, uh, so testing eat up. Oh, in fact, because it remembered testing, eat isn't at one. Uh, so the better thing to do here, this will be more resilient. Obviously, I could just pass in two, but uh, get tasks for mark dot index of eat. Okay, so this is a more robust test and that it doesn't matter what the index is, we'll be removing the correct one and then each should no longer appear. Excellent. So this isn't a perfect set of tests. 
Uh, if we were doing test-driven development, we would have actually been writing these tests before we wrote the code that went into our memory model. Uh, but this is, is reasonable to start off, and it's as much as I want to take time putting into, into the videos here. Uh, this is a straightforward use of Scala test. Uh, what it doesn't show, though, because the model is straightforward Scala code, uh, it's kind of simple. Um, what it doesn't show is testing things like our controllers or how stuff will behave in the web browser. And so we'll come back and deal with those situations in the following videos.